Hey guys, welcome back to our podcast. Hi everyone. <clears throat> Been a little bit busy here applying for Love Island, <laughs> US, in Hawaii. <laughs> um, yeah, if you guys didn't hear, Bachelor in Paradise is doing like a Canadian version, and which I don't understand how that's going to work because Bachelor in Paradise has always been like after the Bachelor. And it's because there's so seasons. many Bachelor uh, contestants that they're probably splitting it up. And you know it's in Alberta, like Banff. That's sick. Yeah, dude. I'm like, I have two applications open. One for Bachelor in Paradise and one for Low Island. It says it's in BAM. Yeah, it's in BAM. But yeah, I feel like... So wait, so what? It's going to be... But that's going to be stupid because... The people who probably live in the US, like closer to, I feel like, Canada, are going to go to the Canadian one. No. Yeah. How is that going to work? Because then everyone who wasn't a Bachelor contestant that's auditioning for Bachelor in Paradise, it's just going to be like thirsty over the Bachelor people. Like me. You, like, let's say it's you and, like, a couple other guys and girls that aren't from Bachelor. Okay, let's say it's you and, like... Yeah, but the whole point is, like, you're actually going to, like, find love not just because they're, they're on The Bachelor and you're trying yeah, to get close. Yeah, like, but isn't that how it's going to be? Like, it's going to be, like, you're a fan of them, so you're, like, you're... I don't know, yeah, girl, like, like, I don't know. I really... Dynamic. I'm not trying to get on that one. Like, I'm just applying for, like, jokes, kind of, but... But Love Island, I feel like, is something that is more chill. And, like, you're just kind of going on for, like, the dating experience, not to get married at the end of it. So, like, I'm down. I'm down for that. Mm. I would I much rather apply for like a challenge show, but there's no challenge show that I can apply for. I apply right for Big Brother. It's kind of embarrassing to say that I didn't get in. Yeah, I feel like I'm not gonna get in here. No, either. like I'm actually cheese though. Yeah, but like I would okay. This they're is what looking we're for do. like interesting people. I'm, I'm not saying I'm not saying you're not interesting, Dude, but I'm interesting. Even with me, like right now, it's saying um, what's something we never guess about you? Like I don't. Okay, big, the Big Brother audition asked things like that too, and I didn't know what to say, and that's the thing. Then I went, like, after I auditioned, which, by the way, I sent in the audition thing, like, the night of that it was due, so I'm trying to convince myself that that's probably why I didn't get picked. <laughs> but, like, when I, like, after I had already submitted it, I was like, shit, like, Dude, I'm not interested. you would not last in that show. Wait, you'd just be, listen, I'm saying. You'd be a fucking, like, you'd be a hothead. Like, someone would try to, like, Sit them to you and you like spaz out on them and no one would like you. No, I only do if that you, to you. Yeah, okay, if you were like Sam, okay. But I bring out the worst in you. Imagine those people. Exactly. Yeah, but you but those, those people, people don't know me. I don't so bring out the worst know. exactly. So they come even harder at you. Like they wouldn't give a shit. Okay, no, I think it's opposite. I think you don't give a shit. Because no. you know that like No. And like people, how you react to me is how you react friend, to those people. How I react that. to you is not how I rea- react to literally anyone else in my but life. But that's different. You're not you don't have a million dollars at stake. <laughs> Like, you, you're going to want to lash out at them. But that's what I said in the audition tape. I'm like, I'm very chill. But, like, if someone pushes my buttons in the right way, I will actually, like, see red. Like, I, I just start saying things and, and yeah, like... Yeah, like you're a fucking psychopath. That's why they didn't pick you. But they want... Like, I wanted to, like, make myself kind of seem, like, a little bit, like, you know, mischievous so that they would pick me. But I guess it didn't work out. So next year, what we're going to do is hopefully this podcast is grown by November of... 2021 when auditions have to come out again and i'm gonna get everyone who listens to the podcast to go on twitter and tweet sam for hoh because that's what apparently you're supposed to do and i didn't even tell anyone i was auditioning so yeah. can you imagine me on that show like what would you do if you just because it's live right it's like like week by week it's like showing the night before what would you do if you turn on the tv and like you saw everyone scheming to like get me out wouldn't you feel so no. bad <laughs> i love <laughs> I'd probably laugh. You wouldn't feel bad. Well, how about me? If I'm on this show and people talk shit, like... But Love like, Island's not like that. A... They don't try and get you out. I'm pretty sure they talk shit about you behind your back. Fran has never watched Love Island. Love Island's more like... is like... You, like... So, like, you have... Everyone's in a couple, right? So, when you first get to Love Island... Like, look, let's ask me right now. Wait, look at this question. I don't know what to say because I was like, I don't know what's good. On the show, if another person is paired with the person you have chemistry with, what will you do? I said I would go flirt with other men. <laughs> Is that what you're supposed to do? <laughs> Don't think about what you're supposed to do. Actually, what would you do? I would go. F- I'd be. I said right here. I said I would be lying if I said I wouldn't get jealous, but I would never show it. That would make me look weak. I would simply go flirt with other men in the villa. But at the same time, continue to be flirty with the person I had chemistry with. It's always good to be a little bit of a chase. <laughs> I would truly do that though. Like I wouldn't be buttered over it. I'd be cheese. Well, but- how it works is like, let's say they pick 
first of all, they only pick like five girls initially, and then five guys, so yeah, like five like or I'm, six. Do they and add then, people in? Huh? Yeah, like, like they add people in throughout. Like, like dude, they're probably picking people who have like some like big following on Instagram. Like, you're gonna pick me from Richmond Hill. I really think it's more interesting to pick people who are in, aren't no, but aren't I think big. Yeah, aren't. I, not that if you have a following, you're a clout chaser. I don't mean it like that. I mean, like, I think it's more interesting to pick people who don't have much of a following because you don't already know all those aspects about your life. And sometimes those people are, like, the most interesting. So anyway, The girls so that, not sure were, like, really, like, really, really pretty. Like, you know, that one girl was pretty silly. You, you kind of look like her. She's, like, lip filler. <laughs> so... <laughs> Does it make someone? Yo, I was like, if I get on, I need to get my hair done. I need to get my nails done. I need to be tanned. I need to get waxing done. I need to get Yo, they my zoom eyebrows in done. Up on that face. Yo, but you so can't care. You but any, you actually can't care. You wouldn't care if you wash it back and you had peach fuzz everywhere. Obviously, I'd care. But I mean, obviously, I try to look good, but you can't. <laughs> right, you would be mortified if you watched that back and you had a unibrow or something like. A no, okay, unibrow. you have to care, but you can't like go in there with the fact like, oh my god, they're gonna get my bad angle. I'm gonna do no, because they, they will. I'm like, gonna set my good angle because, the whole time. No, because there's not. I can't be as stiff like I usually am. I don't know. Yeah, Fred's like, is stiff when there's cameras around. She actually is like a statue. I can't be dated. stiffo. I have to be like just like not. Because then you'll be literally like this the whole time. Oh, this this couple was hot. Selly and the other guy. They were up now. Johnny. Like this bastard's asking me so right get, to give or get a proposal of marriage. Just say yes. You always have I to put, say yes. I believe that there is no set timeline for love. Sure, everybody has a plan like to follow in marriage. For me, is not around right around the corner. However, I would like to meet somebody and genuine, genuine. What? I would like to meet somebody genuine and grow with them throughout this journey in paradise. <laughs> Friend will not fall My in love answers in a are month. good. Are you kidding My me? answers are so good because, like, I, Friend, I have good writing skills. But, like, actually skills. put yourself in these situations. I am. That's why I'm getting, like, bearings out. Like, do I really want to go on this like, fucking show? Like, pretend that somebody, like... I think I'm just going on because I want, like, the excitement of, like, just being on the show. Okay, moving on from this combo. Okay, I want to talk about my sleep process I had the other night. That was really scary. So, it was about... 7 a.m. and I was just waking up and I was about to get up but my dog likes to like in the morning sleep on my chest like she'll literally just come on my chest and sleep on me and then I feel bad moving so I was slightly going back to sleep on my back and all of a sudden I'm asleep okay but I can see myself usually you can't see yourself in a dream like you're, it's from your point of view right but I can see myself in the dream and Alexis was like a like a spiritual medium or some shit and like she tapped me on the back and I turned around and she's like a ghost is watching you while you sleep and then Did I woke up no and then I woke up and I was like what the fuck and then I slowly started to go back to bed and I can it was the weirdest shit I was in mommy's room in mommy's bed and in your dream in my dream but I could I was sleeping but I saw myself sleep but it was from my point of view sleeping I don't know how to explain that you saw yourself sleeping in mommy's bed but it was me in the bed. Like, I can it, I can also feel myself, like, in the bed. Like, it was so weird. And then all of a sudden, I turn to my right, and it's Sam. Okay, it's not Sam. It's what the it's it's a girl with long hair. It's a, it's a ghost. It's a demon. It's She was fucking creepy, bro. She had, lo- like, the ring girl. She looked at the ring girl. But why did you say it was me? Listen, and she had, like, demon eyes, and it was, like, white beam. Have you seen that episode of Black? I think it was Black Me. No, the haunting of that hill where the, the guy she looks in the yeah, mirror and yeah, it's, it's the yeah, bright eyes. Yeah. It was that. And she was just hovering over me. And then when I woke up, it felt like she was there. So I was scared to go back to sleep. Every time I closed my eyes again, I would... 7 a.m.? Okay, listen. Every time I closed my eyes, the ghost was there. I could see the ghost there and I wake up and it wasn't there. And then I closed my eyes again the ghost was like... It's like I was like... I don't know how to explain it. And then I actually... And then I fully woke up and then I was like... My heart was being really, really fast. And I was like, what the fuck just happened? And I didn't go back to sleep because I was scared. But it was in the morning? Why did yeah. you just wake up at that point? Because I think I was in paralysis. Like, I couldn't wake up. And Kiki was on me. I would have dipped out of bed. And then, point. and then, and then the next night, I was kind of, like, looking around my room. And there's this fucking creepy painting in the spare room of me and Sam when we were young. Sam's like, I need to post a painting. Like, Sam looks evil in this painting. So do you. No, I don't. You I really don't look do. e- Okay, I'm going to put evil. a poll. I just I'm going to put a poll on Instagram, which face looks evil because yours looks like you're about to actually come out of the painting and like actually possess somebody in that painting i look like just just cute i'm just like smiling sam has like this evil like and they made your cheekbones really high and like my cheekbones are high when you were eight years old yeah dude i've always had high cheekbones no sam it looks like sunken in almost and her eyes look really like like pointing towards like you Oh my gosh, so I took the painting down the next, like, a night. Okay, that was weird because then the other day, I've, I've been, like, low-key creeped out by that painting, too. Even though it's a painting of us, like, no, it's I get, only like, evil, us. No, I get evil vibes from you in that painting. 
go look at it. Like, it's you. Look into your eye. Like, you look into my eyes. I'm painting you. Like, it's just like, it looks like a joyful little girl. Then you look beside you and you look like you're about to actually murder something. Like, it's scary. You're actually rude. I'm going to put it. I'm going to put it on the story. Okay, anyways. Um... Yeah, then the other day I was walking by, like, because every time you walk by the spare room, like, that painting's just there, and I've always seen it there, and, like, I've always been, like, kind of creeped out by it, but not really, because, like, it's me and Fran. But it's also because the eyes follow you, like, it's a, like, it's... it's one of those, like, paintings, I don't know, like, our parents got this huge portrait made, it's basically just, like, a portrait, and then the other day I'm walking by the room, and it's not on the wall, I was like, oh no, I was like, fuck, it's happening, I knew it, I'm like, mom, why did you, because my mom's been, like, kind of, like, cleaning around the house, I'm like, mom, why did you take down the painting? She was like, I didn't take down the painting. And I was like, and I didn't think to ask Frank, because I was like, why would she take it down? And then yeah, because I've been sitting in that room, and the painting's been up the whole time. And then the next day, she told me about that, so that's funny. So, it's almost been a year since we've been in this pandemic. I think March 20... March 16th. March 16th marks a date. No, that marks a date. No, I'm pretty sure it's already been a year. It's March 16th. No, because that's the day where M closed and said we're not, we're no longer having like you guys. Yeah, come but I think to it work. was a pandemic before that. No, it was okay, but it was officially came, lockdown was like March 16th. Mm. So we decided to reminisce, and everyone on Twitter, like I, I have Twitter, everyone on Twitter is like the, um, it's just me or is the hair, the hair, the air hit different during the first lockdown. And I was like, it was just because it was spring, like that's a feeling of spring. <laughs> The air is different every year when it goes from winter to spring because it's just a new season. So I thought that was so stupid. But I do vividly remember like it being locked down and it was like a different world. It wasn't how it was now where like you're used. It was actually like different. Like it was like, how do I explain it? It just felt like wrong to be outside almost. Like it was like, like, like I was, I had a genuine fear. Like I was genuinely scared at the grocery store. Like, now I can go to the grocery store and kind of, like, keep my distance from people and wear a mask, and I'm fine. Like, I'm fine. But, like, before, it was scary. I and remember me and Sam, like- the first time we went to the grocery store, we literally thought it was, like, a mission. We had gloves on and, like, masks, and we were, like, covered from head to toe. We're like, okay, we're going to get the milk and leave. Like, it was, like, so bad to be in, like, a grocery store. I ordered every single thing on. Now I'm, like, dying to go to grocery stores. I'm like, yeah, that's my outing for the week. I get to go to fucking Costco. But, like, before, it was just not. And, like it was just so like this time last year I was still in school I was still finishing up my last couple of weeks of school this time last year this time last year I was discovering TikTok because before then I literally did not even know what TikTok was or like why people were famous from it I didn't understand yeah same like when you think about it this pandemic went by so fast but so like your birthday happened during it. My birthday happened during it. I graduated during it. You really broke do. up during it. Yeah, that was a year ago. You ended a relationship like almost a year ago during the pandemic. Yeah. Like crazy. it's crazy. No, it's almost it's crazy to think what happened before that. My like, no no got into a huge off this, deadly I'll- accident during the pandemic, recovered, got COVID, recovered, our dad got COVID, recovered. Yeah, a lot happened. Like so much happened. I was thinking like though, think back to when we went to Niagara for my birth. That was two years ago, Sam. That 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 doesn't feel like it happened. Like it I just feel like, like it feels like like a lifetime ago where things before March twenty like twenty twenty happened. Like what did I do on a daily basis in twenty nineteen? Like I really don't know. What I do and like you know what's weird? Like like Fran's been saying how like this these spiritual healers that she's been going to have been saying like we're entering a new paradigm and like I never knew she told me that now I get anxiety like I literally look I got goosebumps saying it and I never knew what that meant but when you actually think about how life is now like and you think about how before the pandemic was just like a different lifetime I think that is the paradigm it's a shift I think by paradigm I think they just mean like shift in your consciousness like you're conscious right now in the pandemic in this lifetime and you're kind of thinking of it as like starting from March 16th of 2020 and then going. And then any time before that was just like a completely different I don't like that. That's scary. That feels like I'm in like a, um, like a different reality. Like I, it kind like of a is. dream. Like we woke up from a dream. Now this is real life. That's what it, my friend said. She was like, Adri was like, it feels like we were in a dream and now we've woken up and this is reality. This is our life. And I was like, don't, like, that gives me anxiety. It kind of is because everything, like, although, like, let's say, like, me and Fran, like, we're really grateful for our lives, right? Like, we're, we have a lot of things to be grateful for, but 
if we're being completely honest, since the pandemic started, um, more bad has happened like in my life personally since March 16th, 2020 than ever before that. Same. At, like, like it's actually kind of like, if you but... think about it, it gets me emotional because so many negative things have happened since the pandemic started that don't even necessarily have to do with the pandemic, like directly to COVID. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But then before the pandemic. But so it's also been, I feel like a blessing in disguise from my experience. I think the most traumatic thing was my breakup. It happened right when quarantine, like it hit quarantine and I got broken up with. Like I was like, what? I couldn't go out. I couldn't be with my friends. I really was just alone with my thoughts. And like I had other shit going on. I was just finishing up school, which we just shifted online. And it was like, it was large final exams for like accounting and like math, like all the big ones that were online. And I didn't do my best. So we had like personal issues going on with our, like our everyday lives. Sam had her own shit going on. Like, it, it, like it was a blessing because I feel like then I had this urge to like want to go out. I was like, I need to go out. I need to get revenge. I need to look good. I need to be with my friends and party it up and be single and and wash all my like sadness away. But then when I look back at it, I'm actually happy that I went through what I went through because I was at like my, my lowest point. And I feel like going out and just partying and like just living my life as if bad didn't occur to me, I would have just kind of felt empty. It was like temporary. Now that I've been kind of on a journey to kind of change myself and who I am, I feel like when it's time to go out and normal life, quote unquote normal, life happens again, I'll be like authentic and like genuine about it. And it's not just going out because I want to go out and like, you know, get revenge or like, do you know what I'm trying to say? Like now I generally want to go out. I had time to myself. I had time to process my thoughts and like become a better person. Now I actually want to go out because I know what I can like give to the world. That's so deep, but like, I just feel like I've, that's but what it I've makes learned. sense because like, not that a breakup isn't bad. Like, obviously that's bad, especially if you've never been through it. But other than that, there were so many other things that you like we are not necessarily going to talk about it on the podcast but me and Fran both know like there's other things that she went through there's things that I went through like members of our family got COVID um yeah like our Nuno was on the on literally the brisk of death like literally literally, we thought he was on his death we never said anything because obviously that's personal but now that we know he's okay and he's gonna like gonna be okay it was scary I remember it it was in October yeah October we were podcasting we got a call from Rizia saying that our has been in like a life-threatening accident and I was I literally was in shock like like I couldn't deal my Nuno was in the hospital for what four months straight by himself till like january yeah so recently kind of it made you it it puts family and like quality time literally in perspective that's what i was gonna say like as like as much as i'm saying there is a lot of negative things that that has happened it's blessings in disguise we were able to get through that's how i'm trying to think about it like we were able to get through i've gotten i got procedures i got a colonoscopy and, and like think about that i got a fucking colonoscopy and endoscopy which, like, for those of you that don't know, I have really bad health anxiety, okay? And, like, I don't like to open up about this because, like, it, it's... People, like, kind of think it's laughable. Like, people who don't get it are just like, oh, my God, you're fine, shut up. But, like, I really do to the point where, like, I went and got a colonoscopy. I got, like, these procedures done. I faced my fear and got a physical. I did all that during quarantine. And although, like, to me getting a colonoscopy and all of that was very scary and I would have never faced that before. I faced it and I got through it and I was able to, you know, that's just an example. Like, that's a little thing, but you know what I'm trying to say? It's like, we got through all these things that we were scared of. How I look at it is, like, if we got through those things, we'll be able to get through things in the in the future. And you're, and you're, and you're like, not forced, but you almost just make it go away by going out and, like, seeing people. But yeah. we were forced to sit with our thoughts and, like, our dark thoughts. You and usually just internalize it and distract yourself. No, but you will have to... There's nothing else to do. I had school. I didn't work because, obviously, I was laid off because of COVID. So, I literally just had to sit with myself and work on myself. Obviously, working out helped and being with my family and friends when I, when I could see them helped. But for the most time, like, I've been by myself. Another thing that... um happened during this whole year since the pandemic started is Fran kind of touched on this just like the importance of certain people in your life I like genuinely love spending time with like family at gatherings and stuff now we've gone to go to our like although yes you shouldn't go and see your nono and nana during covid we were safe but we got to see our nono and nana way more just because 
like no one had work and there was like everything was locked down we would go with the mask and everything but then we would like we got to spend quality time with our cousins like remember in the summertime luca and gabby came over to watch movies oh, no. all those the time those were best like i can't wait for those moments like the summer but that's the thing like it might not happen again so it's like no, now it it'll happen again but now everyone's gonna start going back to work everyone you know what i'm saying yeah so but our like, cousins have, like we've always been close with luca and we've Gabriela. always been close but i'm just saying that the pandemic almost made me like appreciate just like family more in general. And you know what's going to make me appreciate going to the cottage because every year we do the cottage. Yeah. I'm like looking forward to going to a Sega with like my cousins and in Sam pa- and Roman and the- comes. Like it- it's yeah. actually a fun and good in the time. past, like you know, Christmas Eve or wherever or whenever New Year's Eve, we'd always like just want to eat and get out of there. Like eat, get out, whatever. Like go to fucking Frank, go to Vero or wherever, wherever the hell she Ew. used to go oh and shit God. like that. But now like you really appreciate it. And then on the other hand, I feel like a lot of people did this is kind of either cut off or distance themselves from people who kind of just don't make their life positive, if that makes sense. And, like, not necessarily positive, but just, like, if you don't feel like they have an important place in your life, there's no point, right? You're working on yourself. You're kind of thinking about yourself and making yourself better. And I just realized who was important and who kind of wasn't and who I really wanted to make the effort to keep in contact with and check up on and... Yeah, I don't know. I I just feel like this pandemic brought out a lot of negatives, but also positives turned from those negatives. And that's just like how I look at it. And if we could get through this, I think that like we can get through a lot of things. But my point is when you think about like paradigm shift and you're thinking about what that is, it's literally just like awakening to like a new sense of reality. And I actually think I do have a new sense of reality. Same. Anyways, on that note, let's see. Let's play a little game. Let's lighten it up. We're going to go through some first uh quarantine lockdown trends let us know if you guys have done these trends i haven't done all of them i've done most of them though but let's uh let's see the first one do it yourself tie-dye clothes no i bought bare tie-dye clothes but i never you did did it yourself no i didn't jeans you spent like an hour making a tiktok about distressed jeans you brought the mirror outside and like print the arts (laughs) Okay, but that's not tie dye trends. Did you ever wear those jeans? No. The everything circulation I've, everything I've ever like did myself, I threw out. Like tank tops that were too tight, I tried to make into like cute crop tops, and I butcher okay, and just no, throw out. No, you butchered everything though. I'm not very creative when I the jeans I made were actually nice. You wore them. You wore the shorts that I cut. Yeah, to a Sega beach last year, and they were beat. Sam, they had like j- like jagged lines at the bottom. Yeah, I, I made like, it f- like that not cute i don't know i was just trying to like honestly dude i thought i was such a fucking tiktoker yes we lost so many followers on tiktok because we used to actually no mommy got our mom got us famous really yeah, like, that we, like, one don't stupid know video how to, we still don't know how tiktok works you gotta be consistent i just don't have to like mm, time. i don't have the energy okay next tiger king no no i would not I would and refuse. i feel like i would not like it i like, refuse what, what's it about all i know is there's someone called carol baskin Okay, played Among Us. Yes, yeah. I fucking love it. I'm so cheese. I made a real life Among Us for Easter, and we didn't get to play it. Yeah, because Roman got laser eye surgery. Yeah, what a... <laughs> he was really a bump in the wall. That's it. was so cheese. <laughs> He's usually, like, energetic in the life of the party, and I was counting on him to, like, back me up, and he was like, I'm not down. And I was like, hey, Roman, if Roman's you're not down... Roman's always down If you're not anything. down, then no one's gonna be down, so... Yeah, when Roman's like, nah, everyone's like, okay, nah. And Roman's just follows, not doing it. follows Roman. No, but also, my room was a, kind of a blizzard. We could have done it inside. Yeah, that friend, like, fully set that up. I was like, actually I, excited. I feel bad for myself. Like, I, like, did really funny Okay, tasks. relax. You'll be okay. Next. Okay, next. Started a business. Yes, girl. I guess you can call it a business. Like, it's more of a side a side hobby or, like, a side... It's more of, like, a side hobby. We're not... It's not really, like... A business. A lot of people have started businesses, though. I'll, everyone I know, I think. Which is good. Downloaded TikTok. Yes. Yeah. Yo, me and Sam used to fucking stay up to 1 a.m. trying to learn TikTok dances. Do you remember that one time yes. when I was wearing the black yes. top? You know what? You know what? Okay, yeah, talking? pull up. I put uh, at the after, after party. party. You and I. Ew, I, I like took that off her profile. Why? That was fucking embarrassing. Really? Remember the very first one when I'm wearing the army pants? No. Um, Of us two? Yeah. Oh my god, yes. That one? Um, where was like this one? Oh, fuck, what's what, it called? What was that one um, called? Oh my god, see me. No, I have to know it. I have to know it. Anyways, we just tr- took 10 minutes trying to remember what that was, but... Next one. Chloe Ting workout. No. No. I refuse to do that workout. That's not... It's not true. You're not going to do her ab workout, what is it, for two weeks or something? And have a smaller waist just by doing her ab workout. Yeah. Maybe if you do her ab workout, eat in a caloric deficit, eat good food, 
et cetera, et cetera, then maybe. Or but surplus, like, if you're trying to grow your, like, legs. Yeah, I don't know. I did no, not. No, you have to eat in a caloric de- deficit if you're trying to lose fat off your waist to make it smaller. Yeah, but also if you're trying to grow, like, your hips and your waist, you have to eat in... But like, that, that, that if it's someone like me, I, I can't lose weight to get an hourglass figure. I need to gain weight on my yeah. So that's legs why it's just hips, so it's like stupid. Um, and finally, whipped coffee. I still yes. make whipped coffee. That shit was so good. I used to think I was so like good at it too, like whipping it. And, like, I should probably make... like do that. Maybe I'll make. Maybe I'll make that tomorrow. I did today. But ice you know what I did? Makes me kind of bloated. Be- Have you tried making iced coffee with a Nespresso machine? No. It's so good, bro. It's not like hard to do, but put ice, get and then just and then pour, make the coffee. Yeah, like, like make it ice. I've been doing it every morning. It's so good. And I add like okay, a but how do you use that a vanilla. I don't know. If that's enough. Anywho, that is our little quarantine spiel. Next, Bachelor Tell All. I don't even want to talk about Bachelor anymore. No. I don't like it. No. Just can't wait for my experience on that show. No. Um, but I do want to say something about next week's episode. We want to do kind of like a little bit more of a chill episode this week because next week we're gonna have a heavy hitter. We have a really um, exciting guest. We feel like our theme and our niche on this podcast is really just about our like people who listen and people who follow us to be kind of growing with us on this journey of just adulting in your 20s and kind of figuring everything out. You guys are growing with us. Like we're telling you about our past stories and learning from them and like letting you know what's happening in the present and what we've been through and giving our opinions on what you go through. So we thought it would be really cool to have somebody on the podcast who can help us through all that. I don't want to give it away yet, but there is something in it for you guys. So we'll give you more information as the weeks go on, as the week goes on. Um, But yeah, so make sure you listen to that podcast because we'll give you information on how to get the thing. little gift. It's not really a gift. It's just like a service and you can only access it if you watch the pod, listen, listen to, the pod. to the pod. So And yeah, and then like we mentioned before, next week we're putting out a YouTube video about, I don't know, this whole theme about in a car. Someone left a YouTube comment, like a few people messaged us and somebody is persistent on YouTube for us to be doing more car vlogs. So which is kind of cool. I like like vlogging the car. It's really chill. And I like when people tell us, like, it's I really like it. Like, I don't know why so many people said car vlog, but... I like that people are just like, yeah, do I that. I think people just, like, got pleasure off our misfortune that one day, like, with Yeah, your... like, I really, I mean, I know that people viewing probably hope that that's ha- that happens again, because it was probably, probably like, entertaining to watch, but it but... was not entertaining for my pottery to die, um, so. Yeah, this week, I'm going to drive, it's only fair, and we're going to go, we just film what it is, we're doing, oh, I think we did it already in the last episode. Yeah, we're doing, like, um, the three rock, meal. Paper, rock, paper, scissors. Scissors. Rock, paper, scissors, where whoever wins, um, we're going to do three rounds, appetizer, main and dessert that person picks i already know when i'm picking yesterday we did the photo like not photo shoot but yesterday we did our pictures for like whatever this week's upcoming like episode segment like our theme that we always do and we went to go in mcdonald's to get nuggets it was supposed to be a prop oh my god and then sam goes to goes to like pick up a nugget for a prop and they're gone friends fucking ate them all as we were taking the picture she was actually eating she ate all 10 nuggets i didn't even have any for my hands yeah i was it was actually just funny because i was like hey don't and next time i'm not doing a prop that like i'm gonna want to eat but anyways guys that's it for this week's episode hope you guys enjoyed and we will see you next week where we will have our special guests also our episodes are up on youtube starting like last week or something so if you don't like to listen to them on apple spotify or whatever you can also go listen to them on youtube so make sure you do that thanks bye